All right, welcome everyone. As, uh, we're just about to start day four of our week of prayer. Thank you for joining us. Um, my wife said that I need to make more eye contact towards uh, the camera and towards the audience. So um, I hope that you guys are doing well. Um, let, me, let me put up my uh, PowerPoint here. Uh, there it is. All right, so yeah, we'll get uh, we'll get started here. Let me make sure that I'm sharing the screen. Sorry, one second. All right, uh, I've learned a lot in the last four days with technology here. So let me get here. <laughs> to make sure I, I share everything correctly. There we go. Uh, so I don't know why when I when I first initially put the PowerPoint, it, it, it always shows the other slide um, on the other screen. So, all right. Uh, welcome. We're going to go through uh, our itinerary again. There's stacks of refreshments out there. If you, you know, so choose, there's pizza and some Italian cheese bread and some salad. So we, we actually added salad to make it more, <laughs> a little bit more healthy. Uh, but welcome, welcome to our um, day four of week of prayer. It's been a blessing so far in regards to just, you know, learning more about these deeper questions again, uh, these fundamental questions really that are, are always good to be uh, reminded of if you've already, you know, studied it before. And if you haven't, it's just important for, I think, just human beings to really ponder these very fundamental questions that we're going over Monday was like, what is the meaning of life, which uh, is a really big question, you know, that everyone really has to ask for themselves. Like, why are human beings here, you know, to begin with? What does God require of me, you know, if there is a God? And what about evil, suffering, and death, and how to live in this world is today? And um, I'll go over more about that uh, as we continue. Uh, just announcements again, um, if you're watching online, um, we do have uh, Saturday services that you can attend for more, you know, for more talks on on, on other questions and whatnot on, uh, at usually around 10 a.m. in the morning here at the Detroit Korean Seventh Avenue Church. And the address is in that in that first slide, 15956 Middle Belt Road in Livonia, Michigan. So at this time, we'll go go ahead and go right into it. My wife is going to sing a song, and I'm going to, I just have to pull it up, the, the background music real quick. There it is. All right. All right. Hope you're blessed. So, uh, let's pray. <laughs> let's pray first. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for um, this evening. I thank you, Lord, for those that are here, those that are on their way, and those that uh, will be listening online. Uh, Lord, I pray that uh, as we ponder these deeper questions, Lord, I pray that um, we will find answers and that we'll be drawn closer to you, Lord. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do. And uh, be with our family and friends, or wherever they may be. And uh, I pray that you just continue to uh, be with our spiritual walk. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen, amen. Amen. God is truly a wonderful, merciful Savior. And I, I really, really, really like that song. Um, and we're going to talk more about that, actually, as we go through this study today and as we go through this um, talk right now. So I'm going to do a little bit of review of what we've covered so far. So those that, um, you know, haven't been here or are only going to watch today, we'll be able to kind of 
see what we've covered so far. So, um, so I've likened um, the questions that that I've put on our poster or other, on these five days that we're covering to the illustration that was given by G.K. Chesterton, a philosopher that said that, you know, there's very basic fundamental questions that we need to ask about our lives. And he likens us to like boats, like at sea, that just like found themselves at sea uh, or like got spawned <laughs> at sea. Um, and there's no land in sight, but there are other boats around them. And they have to ask like very fundamental questions. You know, first of all, how did we get here in the first place? You know, how do we get to our destination or how do we get to, you know, um, land, you know, as it, you know, as, you know, boats need to get to, to uh, their home and, and to like some sort of uh, land. And then also like, how do you prevent yourselves now from crashing into other boats? And maybe, you know, surviving the elements and whatnot. And how do we now live? You know, and so there, there, these are like basic questions that we ask. And if we're honest with ourselves, when we come into this world, you know, a lot of us maybe not haven't asked these questions. But then you get to a point when you realize, yeah, like I came into this world, you know, out of kind of like out of nowhere. And you have to start really asking like these fundamental questions about your life. You know, like, first of all, like, how did you get here? You know, like, how do you, how did we actually appear and like come into this world? Did we just make ourselves, you know, or, or, or whatnot? Um, and then we have to ask like, what is our ultimate like destination? What is the meaning of our lives here and where are we going? And yes, like, how do I now, that I'm in this world, how do I uh, navigate through this world? Like, you know, what is the ethics and what is the morals in regards to how to not crash into other human beings and not, you know, um, infringe and offend others and whatnot in this world so that we don't harm each other and so that we're able to survive in this world. So these are, is very uh, apropos as that philosopher G.K. Chesterton posed, like those are the fundamental questions that we need to ask. And if you haven't asked those questions, you know, it's it's good for you to now think about these things, um, especially as you become um, more and more aware of, of your life and whatnot. And this these are very important questions because many people have come up with various speculations and 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 things of that nature in regards to this. And so the first question that, that I was engaging with is like, what is the meaning of life? Many people have like come to many different conclusions about it. And, and, and rightfully so, like you can, you know, through your own free will can make, you know, various meanings in your life. But what I, what I was trying to get at was like, is there an ultimate meaning in regards to life? Like, is there an ultimate, like a very like, uh, fundamental reason for us to be here in the first place. And in order for us to understand the big meaning of life, we need to first figure out, is there somebody that created us so that we can ask that person, we can ask that, you know, divine being or that inventor or that creator, whether, you know, we actually have some ultimate meaning in regards to like him initiating this, process of life and this like this whole um this whole experiment of life or this enterprise of life i should say so you know like and we came to the conclusion from the christian perspective that that is the case that there is a creator god and we 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 saw that in genesis 1 1 it automatically declares that in the beginning god was there before matter, before time, before space, and that there is a creator. And so we can we can actually go to the creator and actually ask him, like, what was the what was your what was the meaning of life? Like, why did you create human beings? And why did you create, you know, this world and, and that and the the habitat they're in? You know, like we those are the questions. And then, you know, we saw that the in that first day that first of all, we do, and this is good news for many people, 
that we do have a creator God and that he does give us ultimate meaning in our lives. So we don't have to guess. I think one of the predicaments in our society is like people are depressed so much because they're creating their own meaning that is just kind of like, you know, it's like ropes of sand. They they, they create meaning. They say, oh, you know, I, I'm going to find meaning in, in, in relationships and those fall away. And I'm going to find meaning in my career and that, you know, falls away or I'm going to find meaning in um, vacationing and just like, you know, engaging in like a hedonistic lifestyle. And they, and they see that that's not, you know, that's not working out. And so like, you know, people are coming up with their own meaning, but it's not working. And so like, that's why it's important for us to have the God that created us to tell us like, what was our meaning? So then we can find satisfaction in that. And we saw that first of all, we're made in his image, which is beautiful. And he, and God gave us meaning by giving us different um, capacities in us and different characteristics. And it's like rulership and being fruitful and multiplying and giving us freedom to, to go about uh, eating any of, of the trees and tending and keeping the garden. And he's given us uh, like meaning. He says that he wants us to be blessed. He says he blessed them. You know, in, in Genesis, uh, that, you know, one of the, the meanings of life is to, he wants us to be happy. Like, he wants us to be happy. So, like, that that's not something that that we uh, ought not be striving for. You know, meaning and happiness is very, very uh, intertwined. Um, and so we saw that. And then also what we saw that maybe some people haven't really studied out much is that we were created for good works, like that's the meaning of life. Like we're we're supposed to be, you know, producing good works. You know, and we don't really think about that that much because we're like, oh, nothing in me is good, really. But you were created for good works. We'll talk more about this again. And then we're also uh, created to be complete, to be at peace, to love. Those all kind of stem out of that notion. And so, what is the meaning of life? It incorporates all those things. And, and it's beautiful, beautiful it's beautiful because when you talk to somebody now that you have these answers you can tell them yeah you know you might be finding meaning in, in this and that but do you know what your ultimate meaning is and then you can kind of refer to these things and then the second day we talked about like what does now God require of me and we talked about you know God's commandments but ultimately it's just you know walking in relationship with God and being in God's presence on a daily basis to receive his, his instruction, to follow his commandments and whatnot. And I think that's, um, you know, that's beautiful that God doesn't require it, you to be burdened by like rules and regulations that like will get you, you know, all, um, you know, in, in kind of like, like I have to do this and I have to do that kind of, kind of mentality. But God just wants to have a relationship with, relationship with you, and he wants you to prosper. And we we saw that the Ten Commandments are, are, are just that. They're not commandments to restrict you, but to actually lead you to more prosperity and to more success, to keep you healthy, you know, and to keep your relationships healthy, you know, to, to, to make sure that the economy continues to go on. Uh, in a in a fruitful manner, you know, to not steal and to not commit adultery, to not bear false witness, uh, to not you know create idols and 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 whatnot, and to keep the Sabbath day. These are all things that are not like rules that should be burdensome. They're actually rules that would um, prosper societies and relationships and families and communities. And so, like w w when we have relationship with our our Creator God you know, and continue to be in his presence, you know, that, that this is something that he will instill in us and have, uh, and we can be instructed by him directly. And that the seminal verse there is uh, Micah 6, 8, in regards to that, he has shown you, oh man, what is good? What does the Lord require of you? But to act justly, or to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And then yesterday, we, we engaged in the, in the topic about evil, suffering, and death. Like, where did, that, where did it come from? Where um, did all this death come from? And, you know, how do we overcome all this stuff? And we talked about how, you know, 
in the Garden of Eden, there was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we, we saw that God was trying to describe what would happen if you uh, disobeyed and went to the tree and just got a little bit, a mixture of good and evil in your life. And we saw that, like, we know that 100% evil is really bad. But we do we know that, like, 1% or 2 or 5%, you know, evil or poison is, is just as bad as 100%? that will lead to death. And that's what God was trying to prevent humanity from experiencing. Experiencing, He didn't want humanity to go, to go down and spiral down into destruction and to death. And so he was basically saying, you know, to Adam and Eve, please, you know, don't go to that, to, to, to that uh, tree. You know, some people might question, like, why did he put the tree there in the first place? Because freedom, you know, without having choice, like true choice, isn't really like freedom. And it, and it doesn't lead to like true love, you know, for God. And so, you know, this is something that's very, very important for us to understand in regards to death and suffering and, um, and, and, and evil in this world. And we talked about how like once one sin comes in, it's like, you know, an apple you know, you know, ruining the, the, the whole bunch or like cancer in, in breast tissue or, or any sort of um, cancer in the body. It can just spread and proliferate and just cause, you know, utter destruction of the of the cells, which causes tissue damage, which ultimately causes things to not function properly, which ultimately leads to death. And we see this process, you know, happening in regards to evil and sin. That it said that, you know, God said that you will surely die. And we talked about that yesterday. Like, is it like right away or is it like an ultimately or inevitably that you will die? And, and, and we know that that that's the case, that death will surely occur one way or one way or fashion. We see that in our world today all around us with, you know, all the death in hospitals, in war and in car crashes and all this other stuff. Like we see this very, very um, evidently in, in front of our eyes. And so today we're going to like kind of go with day two, but a little bit more into like, how do we now live in this world? Like, how do we live in this world? You know, like we know what God requires of us. We know, you know, why there's death and suffering and evil in this world. We know what our meaning in life is, but how do we live in this world? You know, like we're able to understand our origins of evil, death, and suffering. And that's interesting. But how about living now and the future? And one of the things that we need to understand in order for us to, to, to know how to live now is like our destination. So it kind of goes into the question of that boat, of boats in the water with that illustration by G.K. Chesterton. Regards to now, like where is our destination? You know, and, and if we know our destination... That will help us, you know, live in this world and how to, to reach, you know, um, like salvation in regards to reaching the, the ultimate destination and what happens after death, uh, what's humanity's destination, uh, destination, and how do I ultimately get saved? Like, how do I, how do I ultimately bring this vessel, my, my vessel, my soul, and my spirit to safety? And how can I actually get saved? You know, this is this is kind. Of, these are the questions that we want to engage in to this evening. First of all, like, how do we figure out what our destination? If we are lost at sea, as it were, like, how do we figure out? You know, what our destination is. How do we figure out what our destination is? And the answer is what we've been talking about from the very beginning. You know, if there is a creator, right? Let me go, let me grab my Bible real quick. <clears throat> um, if there is a creator, you know, in this world, which we 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 kind of said the Bible declares that there is in, in the Christian worldview. Um, if there is a, a a creator and then and he has given us meaning and he has also explained, you know, where evil and suffering comes from, he has given us you know, his requirements and his commandments. And, and as long as we stay, you know, attached to him, like a, like a child to a parent, 
you know, we would, you know, we'll, we'll know where to go. Do you think that like, he doesn't give us even more information about where we're going? And so our answers are going to be from God's revelation from our father and our, in our, in our creator's revelation in his word. And so we're going to find answers again for that in his word. You know, many people, you know, find it to be um, in this world that they kind of, again, they just surmise different solutions. They just speculate about different things. And so and there's a multiplicity of different worldviews out there, different religions and different sort of um, philosophies and regard worldviews in regards to like what our ultimate destination is. And how do you decipher from all those sort of religions and worldviews, how do you decipher like which one is actually correct, right? Um, when I was in uh, taking philosophy class, there, there's like some really like interesting philosophies of how to live in this life. There's one called utilitarianism, which basically says like, we, we, you know, as we live through life, we just have to do what's right for the most people, basically. And you find the utility of certain things and as most, it's basically like majority rules. If the majority of people, you know, believe that maybe, you know, like this, this will work, uh, then, then let's just, you know, follow this way. Pragmatism is another way of living and another way of like, you know, working your, yourself through this life and, and going through this life. This is just, you know, just be practical, you know, and just live from day to day, basically. And, uh, you know, let, let's just not worry about you know, our destination. Let's just kind of like live from day to day and 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 kind of don't ask those big questions. Let's like let's just be pragmatic about it and just try to, you know, do what you can, you know, and just work and and whatnot. And don't 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 think of those things. Just kind of be very pragmatic and practical uh and just live from day to day. There's another one called nihilism, where really the 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 that philosophy is basically saying like there is no ultimate destination you, you you really are lost at sea and and everything is just anarchist or anarchy and there's really like you know you can just find you know you can like pretend you can find meaning in life but really everything is going to be destroyed anyways and you know it's very kind of a hopeless um enterprise in that or philosophy in that regard there's virtue ethics you know there you can find like you know virtues in society Let, let's look at what uh, makes people good and whatnot and you try to find different virtues there's Kantian ethics where he said like you know basically let's pretend like there's a supreme being and and that is actually what is right and there's, there's social contracts or scientific naturalism which just basically says you know scientists scientists is, are going to figure out what the meaning of life is. And they're going to tell us, you know, how the best ways to live and, and whatnot. And then, but, and, you know, I was, I asked my philosophy professor and, 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 and the, they had this theory, they called it divine, uh, divine something theory. And uh, I like to just call it revelation, you know, and, and I asked them as we were studying this, like, if God is real, like what and all these other, like, philosophies like kind of go to the wayside because now we actually know like how we're supposed to treat each other and like God himself you know who created us you know what actually um you know actually has told us uh, this is how things are and this this is how it works and this is how you should relate to each other and live in this world and my philosophy for a is like yeah that's true you know <laughs> that's true and I told him that's what I believe I, I believe that God has revealed in his word you know, you don't have to guess, you don't have to make up all these like isms, but we can actually just open up, you know, his word, his revelation to us, you know, on how to live. And so, you know, a lot of us and a, a lot of people, you know, they, 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 they have this mindset that all roads, you know, lead to God, you know, all roads lead to God, whether it's Islam, Hinduism, and, and other, like other tracks, like it could be, um, you know, Ju Judaism or atheism, and, and there's a materialism, all, all these isms, you know, are, are, are going to lead to God. And, and the only way that you can, like I said this before in, in, in one of the other talks, the only way that you can actually figure out which one is true is if 
there's one of them. If God himself comes down to this world and says, stop guessing, like this is <laughs> like this is who I am, you know, and, and what which religion does that? There's no other re religion where God himself comes down into this world and actually shows like who he is, you know, and it's only Christianity. Like Christianity is the is the one religion where God actually comes to this world and not just, you know, professes that he's God, but he actually backs it up with you know, with, with evidence, he's, a, he's able to heal the sick, you know, heal the blind, you know, he's able to heal the paralytic and he's able to control nature and whatnot. So like, you don't have to guess anymore. Like you don't actually have to uh, speculate and have all these other isms and, and philosophies out there anymore because God himself has revealed that for you and for me. Uh, there's a, there's a really awesome, book called the pilgrim's progress you guys probably heard of it by john bunyan and um it's really talking about the christian walk it's a, it's a whole uh two-part story in regards to you know once you understand this journey and and you understand that there is a crater and that there is like this this destination that that is given to us in his revelation you know, called the kingdom of God, or in this book called Paradise, that he's 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 going and chasing after. Um, now you would now you know like how to live. And throughout this book, it it shows you know what the Christian um, walk is like, and what you know how to live and what to expect. You know, he meets you know different people al along the road that are named things that that Christians have to face. Like, you know, he meets somebody um, that's, uh, that's you know, called legalism and stuff like you're going to meet legalism. You're going to meet like uh, uh, somebody who is um, problems, you know, like that, that, that's, a, that's another person you meet. So like there's a lot of there's a lot of different uh, characters he meets. And, and I, I just like that story because it shows, you know, um, many of the things that we're going to encounter as believers in in god and in, in his revelation through jesus christ in in this life in this life so <clears throat> there in in um the bible it talks about first of all like how to become a christian and how to really understand salvation you know, we all want to be saved and we all want to get to that ultimate destination. But how does that actually happen? And I want us to go back to what happened in Genesis. I want us to go back to what happened in Genesis, Genesis first and foremost. And what we saw there is a fall of humanity taking in a little bit of that, you know, are taking in the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So now they have a mixture of evil in them that leads them to sin and to fall and, and to, and to uh, destruction that, that God said that they will surely die. And what has happened throughout humanity is, is a passing on of that kind of DNA, that kind of like heritage from our our, uh, our original parents in Adam and Eve. And, and in order to like re really figure out how to get to our destination and to really be saved and, and reach, you know, the, the kingdom of God or, or, the, or land, you know, um, in the illustration of both, like to reach that ultimate destination, we need to understand first and foremost, like how our condition is, like how our condition is even right now. And this is this is super important, um, and it, it'll it'll come back to like how we're supposed to live in this world, and and, and I want I want us to go through this um, what's called the Romans road of understanding first of all our condition. It first is, it says in Romans three ten there is none righteous no not one for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You know, like in our human condition right now and how, and how we're going to live in this world, we need to realize that there is nothing like in us that is righteous. 
you know, like a lot of the decisions that we make and and that the, the things that we have done in this world, like we, you know, we can agree that we have, you know, made bad decisions, you know, and we do have that, you know, that poison or that evil, like even if it was like just a little bit or a lot, you know, it's caused us to be unrighteous. And that's why it says in the Bible, there is no one righteous, none, you know, not even one for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you know, and, and this is something that we need to kind of dwell on in regards to like, how do we get to our destination? Uh, we talked about this and, and God has created us to be of good works. Like he wants us to be of good works, but yet we're all unrighteous. Like we all have sin. So how, to, how do we actually um, get to the point where we can uh, get, you know, changed? Like how can we actually get changed? And so um, I, I just want to let go through some of these verses here um, in regards to like how, first of all, we can uh, redeem ourselves so that we can reach our final destination. Because in our own state, you know, it's not it's 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 bad enough to be like tossed in the sea, but if we're in ourselves in in our own capacity, lost in our in our own mind, in our own body, like we cannot we can never really get in our boat to our destination. So in Romans three twenty three again it says, "For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God," and it says that what happens to uh people that are sinners or people that have sin. It says, for the wages of sin is death. So it harkens back to exactly what Jesus said and what God said in the Garden of Eden, that you will surely die. That all those, anybody that, that actually has sinned should receive death. So like being lost at sea and not reaching our destination should be our ultimate destination. Like we should just continue to be lost at sea and not know exactly where we're going. You know, like it, that's kind of our um, destination in that in that illustration. But in Romans six twenty three, it, it, it continues, and I want us to go there in your Bibles if you if you have it with you. Romans six twenty three. It, it continues here, and it doesn't leave you hopeless. It says, "For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus." our Lord. Isn't that awesome? Like, I'm, aren't you glad it doesn't stop at, <laughs> at the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, like if it wasn't for Jesus Christ intervening, you know, like I said, if it wasn't for him to come down into this world and say like, here I am, this is how, you know, you ought to live. And this is how uh, you're going to be saved, and this is where your destination is going to be, you know, like it, we would be totally and utterly lost at sea, you know, in this life. And but but it's the gift of God, like God actually has come into this world, you know, through Jesus to show us what eternal life is. And I think this is beautiful. He, he's showing us how to get to our ultimate destination, how to actually be saved and to and to and to be restored, you know, in, in this life. And it continues to go on to say in Romans 5, 8, or in the previous chapter, but God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So like, you know, when we're at sea and we're, and we're in this boat and we should, you know, we should be finding out like how to get to our destination like we're lost at sea and it's it's almost as if there is a person that came and 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 not only like told us that you're 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 hopeless at, at sea like you're you're not you're never gonna you know you're never gonna find your destination you're, you're you're a hopeless mess in your in yourself but what i'm gonna do is i'm going to come and and die for you so that you can find uh your direction to home and this is exactly what Christ has done for us. It says that Christ died for all those that are lost, all the all those that are sinners. And then Romans 10, 9 says, like, this is all you have to do in order to actually be saved, to get to your ultimate destination. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord 
and believe in your heart that he raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You know, you will be saved. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Isn't that a beautiful, like, promise that all you have to do, if if you feel lost at sea, or if you are dead in your sin, is just simply confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that he raised, you know, this Savior from the dead, and you will reach your destination. Like, you will reach your destination. You will be saved. Romans 10, 13 says it again, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Isn't that beautiful? Like you will be saved. So all we have to do in this life to figure out like how to live and how to be saved is really to call out to our Lord and Savior, to call out to our Lord and Savior that he would, you know, save us. And it continues on. And I just want to read this passage that, that um that I found here it says Roman 5 1 has this wonderful message therefore since we have been justified through faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through Jesus Christ we can have a relationship of peace with God Romans 8 1 says therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because of Jesus' death on our behalf we will never be condemned for our sins Finally, we have this precious promise of God from Romans 8, 38 to 39, which says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, God has come and given us you know, a life raft. And he's like, he, he's like, all you got to do, if you feel lost at sea and you don't know where your destination is, just take that raft, you know, and just, and I'll, I'm going to pull you, you know, I'm going to pull you home and save you and bring you to, to land. You know, isn't that awesome? Like th that we have an awesome God that is willing to take us, you know, in our lostness, in our kind of hopelessness. And he takes us and he's able to to, to save us through Jesus Christ. So now how do we then live? How do we how do we then you know continue now once Christ has saved us? And I think this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the rubber meets the road. How are you then now supposed to live now that you have been promised to be saved and that you are being saved? It says Rome in Romans 8:10 that Christ is in you. It says, but if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life, uh, the, the spirit is life because of righteousness. And we see this throughout, you know, the the, the Bible, uh, especially in the New Testament, that this is what ultimately God wants us uh, in our life, wants us for our lives. He wants to actually live in you. And it says, uh, there, there's many uh, verses that talk about this. Galatians 2.20 is, is, is one of the most important ones. It says, now I am crucified with Christ, and it is no longer that I that live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live in faith, the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, it says that Christ now lives in you. When you confess and you accept uh, Christ in your life. He now lives in you. So then how do we live then? We live according to what Christ is doing in us. We live according to what Christ is doing in us and his spirit. And what are those things that come about because of him living in us and the Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit living in us? And in Galatians 5.22, explain what those things are. Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against that, against such there is no law. You know, like this is amazing. Like what, how should we then live? We should live according to Christ living in us. And what does that look like? What does that manifest like with these with these types of fruit? Living with self-control, living with kindness, living with gentleness 
and love and joy, faithfulness, patience, and peace. You know, that is what, you know, that's how we should be living right now. That's how we should be living in this world as we wait for Jesus to come. You know, having these sort of characteristics by Christ living in you, not by you simply manu manufacturing, you know, certain actions and, 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 and trying to do this and do that, but it's, it's really about Christ living in you and, and manifesting these things as he continues to work in your life. And the question I have for you as we, as we close, um, do you want God to work in you? You know, do you want him to, do you want to consecrate, which basically means, do you want him to come into your life and change you, you know, and, and really like make you holy uh, and perfect again? Do you want to walk with the Lord like that picture with the with the Father and the Son together? Do you want that to, to be in you? Let's pray that that is our, uh, that 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 is the case. Um. So we're gonna go into our our little discussion about this, and we're gonna go into prayer. But I hope this really you know gets to the answer that we're that we're talking about at the very uh, beginning or the question: How do we now live in this world? We live according to the spirit living in us and Jesus living in us and manifesting the fruit, you know, these fruits of the spirit in our lives. You know, some, some might say, oh, you know, but I, I really need to know exactly like how to do this and how to do that, you know, in this world. I need, I need to know all the technicalities of like, <laughs> like how am I supposed to, you know, deal with my finances and deal with my relationships you know, but ultimately what the Bible is saying is that once you have been saved and Christ now lives in you, you know, you are going to manifest these characteristics and, and this is how you ought to live. You know, gaining, you know, the instruction from God himself living in you and being in his presence like every single moment of every single day, you know, you will get, you know, guided to figure out like every single action in your life and it's guided by those types of fruit Oops, i took it out but it's guided by those fruit that we mentioned so let's go ahead and finish and then uh i want to bring it bring it to to our discussion what do you guys think about this now how do we then live how do we then live <clears throat> let me bring it back to the first question how do we live in this world what do you what, what do you guys what are you guys taking from this uh this message this evening? Any thoughts? Any thoughts? Oh, same. That's that's last night in the way, right? We know what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Follow. Right. And like, yeah. These verses kind of double down on too, right? Like, right. We have to accept the gift that God's given us to be able to have that freedom to be saved, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I think, like, the, it's. It's a really huge key component that a lot of people would like to ignore, um, because they want to they want to try to say that it's like legalism or something, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's not like the freedom in God is actually knowing what your role is and being willing to follow that, right? Mm. Like no, knowing that you're called by God for for a greater purpose or. Um, like knowing that you're serving God and that purpose is actually kind of the most reassuring thing that you could have in life. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 this is, it's a very, um, it's very hard mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. um, it, that, it's because of this the spirit of the law essentially mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that that spirit needs to live in us 
Mm -hmm. I think you think about um, the rich young ruler yeah. who was able to keep the law, mm. who did keep the law, but did not have the spirit of contempt. That's right. That's right. And it's that it's that spirit of God that's living within us. And I think it's this is very, you know, as Bible believing Christian Adventists. Right. Um, this is something that we need to deeply think about. Amen. In Amen. So the law and the relation to our, our faith. Right. And, right. And whether um, it is the spirit that is guiding us, mm. or whether we are keeping the letter. That's right. And you know, it's it's kind of like it, this is the example I was thinking about. Um, mm. Is it's like getting angry at your family for not keeping the Sabbath properly. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of like you've got the Sabbath, but then what kind of spirit are you exhibiting in that? There's righteous anger, of course. And it's the frustration. frustration. Well, I, most of the time for us, who are unsanctified. Christ at the temple, it was righteous anger to drive indignation. Yeah, yeah indignation, righteous indignation. I would I would venture to argue that uh, definitely for me, right? If I am the, the number of times that I've actually had righteous indignation as opposed to just indignation, that's an indignation is vastly outnumbers mm -hmm. righteous <laughs> I mean that's what? just the real reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, like what have we really done here? We are trying to uphold something that perhaps we don't even have the spirit of right. and, and so I like I like what you're saying in terms of how do we live. It's really like, you know, Paul talks about it a lot, but you know, right there, living the flesh a little bit. So right. And it is a constant struggle. It is that spirit that can pop up at any time mm -hmm. on the road when you get cut off. Yeah. You know, all these different things that show us that that spirit is not dead within us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that the spirit of God has not fully taken over, you know. Uh, yeah, our lives. Yeah, yeah sure. Our, our lives. Right. And so, you know, I think it's a good reminder of the way we ought to live. Amen. I think it's easy to start off with righteous indignation and have it transfer to indignation and just general <laughs> anger too. Don't keep, yeah. keep pushing buttons or whatever. And well, with, that our, just, with our sinful human nature, I should say. Yeah, that just means that the spirit is not dead within us. Right. But I think the one, one like part, it's not resurrecting. Right, it's just not that. like the, you mean the flesh hasn't yeah, the has, spirit, has, has it hasn't been put to death the kind of thing. Spirit has not been yeah put to death. Yeah, yeah I, I think that the like rich young ruler, like he, his problem was that he kept the bare minimum letter of the law, right? And he, like he, he he's like, yeah, he's like, he's like I followed it since my youth. Yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, I, I've done all this, like checklists. Yeah. Right, like the the very bare minimum, right? Like in in reality, like he hadn't even in his mind he had, but in reality he really hadn't because you know the Ten Commandments say you're not supposed to cover, you're not supposed to do this, that, right? Another guy's before me, so on and so forth. And if you really follow even just the letter of the law with that, like Jesus shouldn't have had to tell him go sell your riches to the poor, right? Mm -hmm. Or go, you know, go give your riches to the poor, right? Like he shouldn't have been so up in the world, or mm -hmm. realistically, right? mm -hmm. like, like there's a compelling argument that like no one should ever really be rich, right? If we're doing what God mm -hmm. said, that's right. Jesus said, "The poor you always have with you," right? And we should be endeavoring to like help everybody, right? Right. <clears throat> that's right. Yeah, I, I think you know, this, this it's just re really important. I think that you know you guys hit hit it on the nail. Is like, you know, like how how do we actually, you know, put the death, you know, put to death the flesh, like it says 
you know, and it, and it, I, I just, I, I think that many times, you know, like I said at, at the end, like we want to know exactly like, oh, okay, how do I do this? And how do I live like this? And I think like the Pharisees and all this other religious people, like they, they want to know, all right, this is, this is what, how I have to do this and this, but if Christ is, in, is living in you and he's like showing you and instructing you and like giving you and transforming you, your, your life, like, I think it, it, it'll come out, you know, naturally, like in a way, like the, these fruits will, will start coming out uh, in you, you know, um, it's, I think it's a process as well. So not everyone is going to like, just like fruit doesn't come out like right away, like right when you plant it, you know, but it, it, it might take, you know, a while, it might take a while, the fruits of the spirit. Yeah, this one. Any other, any other thoughts? You know, when I when I when I when I, 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 when I posed this question, I was like, why did I pose this question? Like, this is this is hard. Like, how do we how do we then live in this world? You know, and you can take different like avenues about this. You know, you know, once we you know if we have our destination in mind, you know, we should just keep focused on that and like you know really live, you know, according to that. And you can take that route <clears throat> in regards to like preaching about that, but really what what when i was studying this it's like you know it's not about like us like contriving anything you know or even like willing it to happen like with our own willpower like i know you know jesus is coming and so like i'm going to you know live accordingly like you know, i'm gonna live according to the fact that jesus is just around the corner and so i'm gonna like put everything right in my life no like you're never gonna get it right you know by just using your your mirror you know, willpower and, and, and learning, you know, maybe even just going through, you know, God's word and finding it like God, like needs to actually live in you, you know, in order for you to, to, uh, to live, you know, it says, I, it's like, it's like, literally it says it is Christ who lives in me. Like I no longer live in a way, like you give up your rights <laughs> in a way that like, I no longer live. It is Christ who lives in me now. Like it's not like I like I it's not like when that's almost like uh the question itself is almost like is almost uh what do you call it self-defeating in a way because it's not how we live anymore. It's about how Christ now lives in you, you know, and this is something that is so like mind blowing that like we were lost at sea, like totally. And Christ is like, all right, I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you to to land, but you know, I'm just you know. I'm going to take over. I'm going to take over your boat and I'm going to take over your life. But like, you're like, no, no, like, I, I, you just, you just be next to me and, and I, I'm still going to control it all the way to, to, to land. You just tell me like, you know what to do. No, it's like Christ is like, you know, like Jesus take the wheel. You know? <laughs> Jesus, I'm going to take the wheel, you know, he's like, I'm going to take the wheel for you. And then I'm going to, you know, um, you know, live in you. And so I think this is just, Important. What 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 are you, are you gonna I say, Michelle? A pastor one time say, a lot of you drive drive around with the Jesus with my co-pilot, right? Plate or bumper sticker, but Jesus should be your pilot, right? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. And yeah, so are you gonna say something? Oh, I thought you were saying so. All right, let's play. We got like ten minutes. We got ten minutes, <clears throat> and then we'll close out. Uh, why don't we go uh you want me to go first why don't why don't we go me and then uh albert and then michelle and then zach so you can finish this time all right uh, heavenly father lord i thank you so much for this reminder this evening but i really have been blessed lord by this week of prayer just going back to these fundamental questions, Lord, and being able to study them out. Um, Lord, just living in, a, in our own ways, Lord, is, isn't doing it for, for me or not doing it for us, Lord. But we, we really need you to come in and live in us on a daily basis, Lord. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would forgive us our many sins, <clears throat> as we are all sinners that have fallen short of your glory. And Lord, now that you know, we recognize that and we have accepted you. But I pray that 
you would just transform us, Lord, that you continue to work within us, Lord, and that you continue to, to guide us uh, and just hold us, Lord, uh, by your righteous right hand. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this reminder <clears throat> that uh, you can do that and you are doing that through your spirit. And Lord, we just pray that you would, your, your fruits of the spirit will continue to manifest in our lives. Lord, we thank you so much for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for staying with you, Lord, and the opportunity for, to come together in prayer, Lord. Um, we thank you for the message tonight and the reminder of um, what type of spirit you want within us. And so we ask that you instill your spirit within us and let our fleshly spirit die. And um, just walk with us in every way, um, be it our church and English ministry with everyone that is traveling or out and about, Lord, and um, continue to bring um, those that um, need to come uh, to be able to you know, be changed um, and change us. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you, Lord. We'd like to pray for all. We'd like to thank you for the the lessons given to us at the same time for the challenges that helps us more to be ready for the uh, more um, challenges that it's going to come. We believe really that um, that if we are being persecuted, it means we are on the right track. Lord, continue to um, bless us, Lord, and help us to be faithful to you, strengthen our faith in you, Lord, and help us, Lord, to keep um keep us away from temptations or to to fathom them lord we can't do nothing of that you so we'd like to surrender everything into you we continue to bless this a week of prayer as we're going to end tomorrow and we continue to bless as well those who will be able to reach out this this um message every night that we have continue to be as well lord with every families we have here in this church and in every churches all around the world and we would like to pray for all the leaders from general conference down to the local churches with the um, uh the fellow members help us lord and strengthen us and bind us in one accord of love thank you for saying our prayer i say we pray most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we thank you again for another day that we can come here and worship you freely. We thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us for safe travel here and um, overall good help. We ask, Lord, um, again, that you would please continue to guide and direct us and may we continue to show your love to those around us and our families and um here we excuse me um continue to uh serve you better and we thank you for the reminder of this uh message that we uh, do not always follow what you would have us to follow um and that we we still have room to grow um Oh, please uh, bless us now as we continue in fellowship uh, and bless the food and may it strengthen our survival for the use as well. And just stand here pray. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. God bless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.